is Sharda, though. The blue and white is cutting back the lead. Loving Dream and Robert Havlin in front and have won the race. Subjective is for Joe Fanning and Mark Johnston is coming clear and will win the Gold Cup. Right, we are back. Day three now. Um, well, with any luck between the three stroke four of us, depending on how many of us get a chance to do these, we've found some form of winner out of this. I'm sure I'm sure we're more than capable, or fingers crossed, at least someone out there has. Um, today, we're covering the three races, day three. The Thursday, which will be the Norfolk Stakes, then the Ribblesdale Stakes, and the big one, the centerpiece of the week, the Gold Cup. So I'm gonna get straight into it with the Norfolk Stakes, the five furlong sprint. Um, again, it's another tricky one. Um, a lot of unexposed horses in this, and then a lot with just ones by their name. I mean, you've got Aidan O'Brien looks to be uh, starting day three off quite strong. He's got, I think, the top two in the betting at the moment with uh, Blackbeard and the Antarctic, uh, I believe it is. Uh, again, both unbeaten. Uh, Blackbeard, I think, unbeaten in three this year. The Antarctic, I think, won so far, but a convincing one. Um, obviously, with O'Brien's, the jockey booking is going to be key. We know that most of the time anyway. It's not like he hasn't got an arsenal of jockeys anyway to rely on, but we know where Ryan Moore tends to go would most likely be his favourite choice. Again, hasn't always worked out that way. We know how it works. Buick's done it the same with Doyle, with Godolphin's. They tend to get it wrong. Um, I personally have gone for Blackbeard. Um, again, it was very difficult to decide between the two, but out of his three races that, or her three races, shall I say, um, that has been run so far, just looks a little bit more convincing. Uh, can run a bit green in the early stages, which again is a concern with a five furlong race, but should have enough experience in the bag now to, to get this one in at six to one. Um, would be me starting the day off with an O'Brien but again in that race talking of the Godolphins you've got Noble Star who also unbeaten you've got Clear Point for Richard Fahey also unbeaten so again a lot of unexposed types it, it's that typical dash uh, field feel to it where anything can win but for me I'm going to go with Blackbeard for Aidan O'Brien on race one now the Ribblesdale Stakes, one mile three. Uh, current favourite, Sea Silk Road. I'm sure that's what I've got down there. It's for Haggis. I mean, two wins out of two this year. Uh, it's very difficult to argue favouritism, shall we say. Um, and what was a li little bit more convincing was it even tends to dwell at the start. So it doesn't find rhythm um, straight away. doesn't seem to settle. But finishes a race off strong as you can see for two for two this year including the win at Goodwood um, what I've done is I've gone against everything I've just said there uh, and I'm going for Godolphin uh, Life of Dreams nine to two I believe currently in the betting I know it's 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 quite tight at the top um, another one that has had a go at one of the powerhouses in Emily Upjohn and we saw exactly what she almost did uh, at the weekend at Epsom, uh, again a clearer run, a better start. She would have gone away five, six lengths, possibly. Again, we don't know. It's that's not how it will be put down. Great win for Tuesday, but unfortunate for memory up, John. Um, but back to life of dreams again. Was a good five, six furlongs behind Emily up, John, but didn't lose anything in defeat with the way that the horse ran the race. Uh, stayed on strong, which you'd expect. Uh, from a whole set of Cedar Stars anyway. Um, has got capabilities. I don't see anything of Emily Upjohn's capabilities in this, but still has to perform. If the horse runs the way the horse ran against Emily Upjohn, I think it's got a fantastic chance at nine to two in this. Again, the favorite is the favorite for a reason, um, but I think they're to be taken on uh, with the fact that the horse doesn't seem to settle see the silk road or see silk road i believe it said um so personally i'm going to have a stab at life of dreams for godolphin and hope that buick gets the ride again on that one big one gold cup now i've put here trushan versus stradivarius uh, i do genuinely only see it between the two of them 
Um, my heart would say I would want Stradifarius to potentially bow out on his last year as a winner at Ascot in the Gold Cup. But I believe I'm going to go with my head, which unfortunately is Trushan. Well, not unfortunately, depending on how the result goes. Um, again, both started off the year strong with wins. Uh, the only concern I had with Stradivarius is that hit a flat spot and then had to really get into a rhythm late on in a potentially weaker field to win the race that he did. Whereas Chu Shan, you could see, got the job done that needed to be done. Uh, pulled away well, settled in the race, and at no point did you feel like Chu Shan was in trouble. Whereas Stradivarius, you always, you hold your breath going into the last two furlongs. And I do think at, I think it's like a two year age difference between the pair now. I think that that is going to start to tell. And I do believe I mean, Trushan, I think, has, has beaten Stradivarius th twice now. Uh, I could be mistaken. I'm sure someone will let me know. Um, and I do see it being the hat-trick. Um, I do see Trushan winning the Gold Cup and winning it well. Um, also, you've got Kiprios in there for O'Brien. Now, that's a horse that will have to step up quite a bit in trip. But you can't put it past O'Brien to think that he, he's obviously, that horse is in the betting for a reason. And I, th I actually could see Kiprios possibly even nick in the second. Um, I would like Stradivarius to run a very good race, a very solid race. Um, but for me, and I know this will probably upset Mark, because I reckon he's going to lean with his heart on this one. Um, but I'm going to go with Trushan for Alan King. And I do believe that the Gold Cup will be his. Um, yeah, so again... We'll see you again for day four tomorrow, and I'm sure the lads have got uh, a few up their sleeve as well. I know Jamie's got a couple, so uh, have a good evening, everyone. See you soon. Day three for the Royal Ascot meeting, and I hope you've um, got a few winners and enjoying the meeting so far. We're halfway through, and it's the Thursday at Royal Ascot. And we look, like Sean said, we're looking into three races, and which are the Norfolk Stakes, the Riversdale Stakes, and the Ascot Gold Cup. So the first one, uh, the 2.30 Norfolk Stakes, Group 2, five furlongs. And looking at the odds, at 5 to 1, I'm going to take an each way selection. And that is Parisian Force, uh, trained by Richard Hannon. Now, I was very impressed uh, how he won in the Brocklesby at Doncaster uh, at the beginning of, um, in the second week in March at the, of the uh, start of the flat season. And he'd beaten at the time Primrose Ridge, now in the same owners, uh, Silks, winning by three and a quarter lengths. Um, then he's built um, another bit of foundation to another win, uh, to another win at Newbury. Um, it was a small field, um, there was, um, including himself, and there was two others, so there was three runners uh, in a condition stakes, um, in which um, this time um, he was held up um, instead of going forward, so he was held up, and but then he quick and clear um, in the last uh, two furlongs, furlong and a half, and he made a very good impression again um, against the two horses. Um, and I think he will improve again, um, especially at the Royal Ascot. Um, the trainer has said that he believes that he's the same, um, not the same sire, but as, as the same uh, horse as he trained with um, Camford Cliffs. So that's a big, um, like, big hooves to fill. Um, but he's my selection for me, the Norfolk Stakes, which is a Parisian force trained by Richard Hannon. Three forty, and it's the Ribblesdale Stakes Group Two, one mile, three furlongs, and the important two hundred and thirteen yards. And my selection is Emily Upjohn. Um, I was um, there at the at the Oaks at Epsom, um, and it was just an unfortunate um, beginning um, at the stalls, where for some reason um, she just anticipated the the, the stalls out uh, trying to. When the stalls open, it just she just um, hopped and um, 
and just lost a bit of her footing and just unfortunately um she had to be held back and was at the back of the at the back of the field um I'm, you know trying frankie was trying to try and get a best position as possible but obviously um he had to go and held back um and try to um get the momentum of emily up john and then coming towards uh towards the home straight and then pulling out um to the near side because of the soft conditions at the time and um she really did motor um and really put put the um put the die to the sword as they say um and then try to nick it and try to make that mis uh, try and make up that mistake um coming from the near side and it was just a little bit too little too late um and that was just that is the just the um the importance of a start coming out of the stalls and just got beaten by i would say by short head or nose um against tuesday um i do believe that memory up john is a is a very um talented horse um i think you'll see her um hopefully again next season um i think she'll she will go for i would say uh for the arc um looking forward um but I really think that Emily Upjohn is a superstar filly, um, another um, superstar uh, filly for John and Faye uh, Godston. Um, and I think that she will be um, a consolation winner for, for that Royal Ascot instead of the Oaks. Um, but that is, but nevertheless, that's still a important black type race for the Riversdale Stakes in the Group 2, one mile, three furlongs, and a very important 200, 211 yards. And that's my selection of Emily Upjohn. Now the third race, which is the Ascot Gold Cup Group 1, 2 miles, 3 furlongs, and the very important, 210 yards. And looking in the field, and I can't really see uh, Triscan if the weather's going to be holding up and it's going to be, you know, um, hot weather. Um, and it's going to be a quicken, um, a quicken track. I don't think that true is going to will be running there, unfortunately. Um, but I've gone for Stradivarius because um, you know what you get with Stradivarius. He's an eight-year-old. He's won uh, three uh, gold cups, Ascot Gold Cups, um, and I've unfortunately again in the in the arc and also in a in, a, in another. Um, and also at the Royal Ascot um, in the in the Gold Cup from last year, I think when we had, didn't have no crowds or or anything like that, um, he was running on good uh, soft conditions. Um, I don't think he, he suited suited um, the horse Stradivarius. It just didn't really bode out for him. Um, so it would be great to see the Stradivarius winning the fourth Gold Cup um, for the eight year old. Um, in which he's still a cult, which is a very good um, train uh, feat for John and Faye Godston. Um, I think um, you know it's it's hard to you know it's it's easy to have a, an eight year old gelding, but it's very hard for an eight year old cult, um, so to speak. Um, but the grand conditions will be key. But I'm sure looking at the weather forecast through the week, there there isn't significant rain. Um, obviously, the, um, Ascot will be putting water on the track. Um, just to um, you know, not to go on really quick um, conditions, but um, I hope he he's still got the um, the the kicking speed um, as he coming off the home bend and and into the home straight. Um, I think it, I really do like to see him winning the fourth gold cup again. Like I said, uh, he's my selection for the gold cup, um, but it will be really interesting um, if he um, retires as a. Um, as a, or obviously an entire horse or a cult horse going to the breeding sheds and there'll be like, uh, will be a like a no, uh, national hunt or a stayers um, um, breeding um, horse. And that will be interesting when he does, um, when he does retire and um, see at the, what the outcomes are for his, um, his, uh, his fillies or, or, or young two year old um, colts and fillies. And that's my selection, Stradivarius. Um, odds, I'm looking at odds at three to one for the Ascot Gold Cup. 
Right folks, here we are on to the third day. Glenn again for Money Rider, give you my selections for day three. Um, just the three races today um, that we look at. Uh, the first being the Norfolk Stakes. Um, as Sean said, there's another tough one really. You know, they've, they've all got a win in the win column. Um, yeah, it's quite a lot you can like really. Um, I've got to be honest, I've, I'm leaning towards um, Love Reigns for Wesley Wall. Again, you said it before, you know, he knows how to train a sprinter for sure. Uh, it won by about nine and three quarter lengths or nearly ten lengths or something um, uh, last time out of Keeneland. Um, so obviously you'd think probably prep for the run. Um, so I'm going to go with Love Reigns and Wesley Wall to raid this one. Um, I think some places I did see Sky Bet, I think it said tens, um, but most of the others seem to be about fives. Uh, so obviously shop around. Um, but then having said that, I also quite liked uh, David O'Mara's um, uh, Maria Branwell. Um, one, two, at five furlong so far, so you can't exactly argue with that. Um, obviously what she's beaten, you know, might not be anything spectacular, but at 16s, 14s, round about that, um, which most of them are offering, um, is not a bad each way price. So I'll probably chuck that one in there as an each way, maybe. Um, yeah, so that's my selection for the North Stakes. Uh, Love Reigns, uh, Wesley Ward. Um, moving on then to the Ribblesdale Stakes. Um, well, I'm not going to really talk too much about this one either, really, because all honesty, I think Jamie said it all. Um, for me, Emily Upjohn's in there. Uh, she does appear on the sites as a favourite. Um, she was unlucky at Epsom stumbling. Um, I completely agree with Jamie. I think she's proper classy. Uh, and fingers crossed, all being well, she'll dominate this. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see her the real class again. Um, you know, I mean, she almost did it, didn't she? Let's be honest. Um, almost pit Tuesday, but just wasn't quite getting there and probably just, you know, just struggled from, you know, that beginning, just struggled to recover. But, you know, still showed, uh, you know, ability to, to get to where she did from where she was. So, um, yeah, hopefully we see Emily up, John, at her best. Um, shows how classy she is and, uh, and wins the Rival Stakes. Uh, moving on then to the Ascot Gold Cup. Um, I mean, again, it's another one you could argue doesn't need a great deal of deliberation. Um, you've got the two, obviously, that everybody knows, Stradivarius and Trushan. Uh, we all know what Stradivarius has done, winning, winning three gold cups. Um, I quite like the idea of a kit for us, and I'd like to see him step up and throw his name into the sort of stayers hat long term, uh, you know, to announce himself sort of thing. Uh, that would be nice. Um, I'm not quite sure... This is the right stage to do it. You know, there might be another race, you know, not, literally not talking the Gold Cup, uh, where that might happen. Um, I have to agree with Sean. I think Trushan's the one to be on. Um, had the measure of uh, Stradivarius on soft at uh, Longchamp. Um, so providing, you know, it doesn't completely dry out and it's not bone dry, then I think uh, Trushan's the one to be with. Um, not wishing to sort of, you know, besperch Stradivarius, but obviously, you know, Stradivarius has, you know, been around for a while now. Trushan's are sort of here and now. Um, and I just think very much the time is now, you know, course and distance winner as well. Um, yeah, just got a lot of things going for it. And as I say, you know, don't get me wrong, of course, Stradivarius will be there. Um, but I just think Trushan, you know, is the here and now, want for a better word. So um, I think Trushan will win. Uh, Stradivarius, I'm sure, will be there or thereabouts. Um, but then I'd also, as I say, quite like to say Kip for us, uh, you know, throw his name into the hat long term. But, um, yeah, pick for me in the Ascot Gold Cup will be Trushan. There we go. That's us again today. So, unfortunately, Mark has been very busy of late um, and not had a lot of time to film some videos for us. Uh, so, Mark will endeavour, I'm sure, to get us some uh, selections, you know, on the day or, or, or the day before, whatever. So, keep an eye out for them on Twitter and uh, we'll try and get some of these tweeted up if we can as well. Towards the line, and Palace Pier is the winner of the Queen Anne. Loopy Fernandez He's been busy, he's very talented, he's very tough. Poetic Flair has won in great style. Lucky Vega just second to back.